In this video, we're going to take a look at Organic Studios' Oscars Copper. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion. This is certainly an interesting red. It is red, but under the right conditions, pen and paper like you're seeing, it's almost a kind of dried blood brownish red, which I do think is a very interesting tone. This ink does give tone variation by pen, and it does seem to shade on fountain pen friendly paper. I like how it's doing it in this case because of that kind of dried blood look. It's like a very morbid type of thing that I like that color. I don't know. It's not aggressive. It's very well behaved and really worth taking a look at, even if, like me, you're not really a huge fan of reds. I think the tone that this is putting down definitely makes it worth taking a look at a sample. I like to change things up by using a different pen each day. Today that pen is a Fountain Pen Revolution Guru with a Fountain Pen Revolution Medium Nib. It's inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. To see how I arrived at that opinion, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the fine nib. It's a very different color than we were seeing in the original opener, but very nice red that's going on here. It's not feathering, it's not spreading, it is shading, which admittedly I have been finding some reds that shade in the recent year, much more than in the past. It's doing it very well when it does shade. It shades to that much darker here, not almost, almost, but not quite that dried blood look. Looking at the medium nib, it is a bit darker than we got with the fine. It does not feather, does not spread. I never see it when it is shading go to that kind of dried blood look, but it goes from a nice bright red to a very dark, rich red. And you see it in Plus and Euclid and Other, all on a third line, and you can find it quite a bit throughout this writing. Looking at the stub nib, we get a tad bit lighter than we had with the medium. It doesn't feather. It doesn't spread. It does shade, and it shades similar to what the medium did, but nowhere near as frequently, which was a little unusual because often we see that the stubs do a, more, a better job at showing off the shading. That would be it. Looking at the back of the page, you see that we get no bleeding and no ghosting. 
To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Pilot Metropolitan with a fine nib. A Pilot Metropolitan with a medium nib. A Pilot Metropolitan with a 1.0 stub. The next writing sample is done in a Field Notes Steno Notebook. Looking at the fine nib, it is a little bit darker in tone than we had on the Clairefontaine. It's not feathering. It's not spreading. It is shading. And because it is a darker red in general, the shading is very gradual, but you definitely see it. On the first line, look at the word point, how the P and the T are both much darker. Or on the second line, right side, you see the H of theorem much darker than the rest of the word. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker in tone than we had with the fine on this paper. It is a little bit darker and duller in tone than it was on the Clairefontaine. It does feather a little bit. You see it in the first name, Sachiri, on the H. You see it in butt at the T. It feathers a bit, not huge, but regular enough to know that you're going to have it. It is spreading a little bit. It is still giving just a little bit of shading. Looking at the stub nib, we get the same tone that we had with the medium. We get feathering, but not as much as we had with the medium, and not as large, not as stand out. You see it a little bit on the L of closer. It's not bad. You see it on the ES of degrees in the second line. Not bad. There's no real spread. There's no real shading going on. It's just a solid dark red. Looking at the back of the page, you see that it did get deep into the paper, but it never came through and touched the paper on the other side. Um, I think you could write on the back of this page. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The next writing sample is done in an Ampad Steno Notebook. Looking at the fine nib, it is darker than we got on the Clairefontaine, and in fact, a much richer tone. I think if you're using yellow paper like this, this particular red is looking beautiful on this page. Very bold and vivid to look at. It's not feathering. It's not spreading, it's not shading, that's lost on the paper. What is really brought out is a beautiful red with this fine nib. Looking at the medium nib, it is a bit darker than we had with the fine. It does feather a little bit, but I think it's fairly under control. It does spread a little bit, but again, I think it's under control. It's not shading. I think while this is a, a different looking red than was on the fine, it is still a beautifully vivid dark red on this paper. And if you find a pen to keep the feathering under control, great match. Looking at the stub nib, we get the same tone that we had with the medium. We get feathering, but less and smaller than it was with the medium. We get almost no spread. Now, almost because there is just a little bit. And we get no shading. But again, I really see it as the tone of the paper is what's eating it up here. I think the stub is a better match with this ink for this paper than the medium was. Thank <laughs> you.
looking at the back of the page, you see that there was some ghosting, but I do think you could comfortably write back here, and nothing touched the page underneath. There was no bleed. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. And here we see the results of the resistance test. The next writing sample is done in a national steno notebook. Looking at the fine nib, it is a bit darker than we had on the Clairefontaine, but not quite as dark as we had with the last paper. We get no feathers. We get no spread. We get a little bits of shading that certain parts of words do get a little bit darker. We're not getting as beautiful a red on the page as we did with the last paper, but I still think it's performing very nicely and looks very nice on this paper. The toned paper seems to be doing really good things for this ink. Looking at the medium nib, it is a little bit darker than we had with the fine on this paper. It is close to the tone that we had on the Clairefontaine. We're getting no feather. We're getting no spread. We're getting, mm, I, you know, I'm going to say no shading because I can spot a couple areas that are a little bit lighter, but... If it's not jumping out at you, it's because it's barely there. Look on the third line, right of the line, you will see precise where you'll see decent shading. Looking at the stub nib, we get very much the same tone that we had with the medium, which is a bit darker than we had on the Clairefontaine. We get no feather, we get no spread, we do get shading much more. It's pretty good. I think it's about as good as what we saw in the fine. You see it a lot in the word Euclid's right at the beginning. You see it on curves on the second line on the right side. You see it at not on the third line. So it is coming through quite a bit and regular enough. Looking at the back of the page, you see that Ghosting is no kind of a problem. You can easily write on the back of the page. And of course, nothing bled through and touched the page underneath. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Levenger Fireball. Here is Monteverde Red Velvet. Here is Noodler's Antietam. Here is Noodler's Widowmaker. The next writing sample is done in an Office Depot steno notebook. Looking at the fine nib, we're getting about the same tone as the last paper, which is a little bit darker than we had with the Clairefontaine. Once again, toned paper is doing really good things for this ink. Now, this is not feathering. It is not spreading. It is shading, and I think it's shading more than it really has on any of the papers, including the Clairefontaine. Winner of a paper. Winner. Looking at the medium nib, it is quite a bit darker than we had with the fine. It is a little bit darker than we had on the Clairefontaine. It does not feather. It does not spread. It does, mm, in a couple of spots, shade. You'll see that that goes darker to lighter to darker, and every is much lighter starting out and ends very dark on the Y, where on the fourth line, the word surface starts lighter, gets darker, gets lighter again at the AC, and dark again at the E. Looking at the stub nib, we get about the same tone that we had with the medium. 
just a tad bit darker than we had on the Clairefontaine. We get no feather, we get no spread, we get some shading, and it is shading fairly well. Second line, right in the center, look at precise, mid-tone to light to mid-tone to light to very dark on the E, looking nice. Only on the fourth line, lighter to darker. Looking at the back of the page, you see that ghosting is well under control. You can easily write back here and nothing bled through and touched the page underneath. While it's nice to find other inks in the same color family, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here's a blue-black ink by Jehirban Blue Nui. Here is a gray ink by Mont Blanc, their Oyster Gray. Here is a blue ink by Pilot there, Namiki Blue. Here is a black ink by Schaefer, Black. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the fine nib, it is quite a bit darker than it was on the Clairefontaine. It does feather just a bit. I'll call it manageable. It does spread just a bit, but I'll again call it manageable considering it's copy paper. It does not shade, which in the case of copy paper, I call a good thing because usually that helps it not bleed. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the fine. It is darker than it was on Clairefontaine. On Claire, uh, Clairefontaine. I'm leaving this in. <laughs> it does feather a lot. It does spread a lot. It does not shade at all. But it is a nice dark red tone that's not obnoxious to look at, which can make it pretty good for grading. Looking at the stub nib, we get the same tone that we had with the medium. A lot darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. See, I said it that time. It does feather tons, spread tons. Well, not tons, some, a little bit. Tons may be overstating it, but it does spread. It doesn't shade. It doesn't look bad here, considering the paper. If you really wanted to be able to use it here, I guess you could but I think you miss out on what is the best look for this ink. Looking at the page underneath, you see a ton of spots where I circled where it did bleed through. These are tiny little spots where it touched, but it did bleed through to the page underneath. And looking at the back of the page, you can see why, as there's plenty of ghosting, though maybe you get away with using the fine on the back. So what nib and pen do I think is gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? The very wet medium that I'm writing with on screen right now really had given me a different expectation for this ink. I love the look here, and I think the very wet of any nib will do well in replicating that for you. Now, it's not a bad red um, on a lot of the papers, and in fact, on the yellow papers, you could probably go with a medium flow, but if you're using finer fine, uh, fountain pen friendly paper, really go for a gusher because the tone you get is beautiful and the shading to that kind of dried blood brown, on point. I hope you got something out of this video, and if it leads to you wanting to try this ink when you purchase it, let the retailer know where you heard about it, whether it's me or any other channel. Thanks for watching.